since I've been talking about every Superman film for years later in the previous DCEU incarnation of the Man of Steel, I'm going to rank every single film, all eight Superman centric. I was gonna include like Superboy or like Supergirl or whatnot, but I was like, those aren't Superman films. I'm just gonna include the core Clark Kent, Man of Steel, Superman. I'm gonna include BVS because it's also like a half Superman, half Batman film as well. So there are only eight films so far of live action. Let's start at number eight. The only bad film is Superman 4, his most important adventure. Is Superman 4 The Quest for Peace. I mean, do I have to explain myself for this? This movie is not good in any way, shape, or form. The reuse of the Superman flying thing, it was a joke, hilarious and ridiculous, and it became not funny anymore at a certain point. A nuclear man, clearly one of the best villains of all time, which is why this movie is near the bottom and dead last because he's the best quote unquote villain of all time. You know, just great actor, all of that stuff. Fantastic, right? Lex comes back for some weird reason because, you know, it's Lex Luthor. He probably came back for like a, you know, quit because the script was so just kind of whatever and the film was short i remember watching the runtime but like oh it's not like an hour 29 minutes this is gonna be a breeze i have nothing to worry about and i've always heard this is a bad movie how bad can it be turns out it could be bad john cryer's in his movie which is funny because now he's moving on to be lex luther supergirl and he's great in <laughs> So it's always interesting going back old Superman films and projects and seeing actors that do other things later on and Superman properties. For some reason, they do that with Supergirl and Marvel, all that stuff. I just think it's kind of interesting and kind of cool to bring those actors back. Also, the Lois Lane stuff, the redo of telling her and then giving her the kiss of truth for one again, that was really dumb. I did not like that at all because why would you do that? Fucking stupid, just saying. So redundant retreads of things that happened in the previous films, bringing back old characters for the sake of bringing them back, creating this nuclear man who's clearly, again, the best villain of all time. John Carter seeing him was cool. Reeves was just, I think he was producer on this film, right? I remember seeing opening credits be like, Christopher Reeves, executive producer? Or am I just making that up? Talking out of my ass right now. But either way, I remember seeing like producer name, Reeves. Either way, not a good film. That's why it's at dead last. Number seven is leading a, a, a double life. Really? Superman and the Mole Man. Now this is the first theatrical release Superman film, slightly under an hour and it's okay, it's fine. There's not really a lot of Superman-esque stuff in this film at all. You only see him like, I don't know, a handful of times and he likes me with his body and everything. Like, it's not really a Superman film. It's really a Clark Kent film with these mall rats, mole people running around getting mistreated. The people of, I'm assuming Smallville, don't like him at all. And it's definitely a movie of its time. This is 1951 and they didn't have all the cool stuff now. I am giving it leeway a bit because I don't know, maybe things were different back in the 50s but it's still not a good film i just think it's boring it's not horrible you know it's just like superman just with lows like lows doesn't know a secret yet weird mole people like i'm trying to figure out what to say because i'm forgetting the film as i'm talking about it right now it's kind of forgettable the mole people they look kind of weird like why mole people could they not get like superman villains or something ip rights who knows i guess i do like the public turning again on these mole people and superman having to teach them not to be horrible people hey stop these people like you know differently even though they are different treat them like you would like a human being i guess i like that the Superman suit looks like the suit, you know, no complaints there. It's probably the best they could have made back in 1951. And then the actor playing him is just, you know, he's fine. Like, he's kind of stone, not stone face. I keep saying stone face. He's kind of stiff. Just be super heroic, be Superman, you know. It's all right, he's Superman, you know. So, not really an eventful movie, just a film because they wanted to make a film back in 1951. And also, it feels like a prolonged TV episode. Like, there are things happening for the sake of happening and prolonging and going on and on and on. Why does this keep going on? The movie should have ended like a 30 minute, but because it's like a future link film theatrical release technically it's like okay we need to prolong this it's like okay whatever so again not a very eventful movie just boring and okay number six is Batman vs Superman Dawn of Justice now I would have liked this movie and I did like this movie up until a certain point right I think I like the battle between both Batman and Superman they both have reasons to not like each other and go after against each other Zack Snyder does a really good job at that granted not a lot of people like this style rooted in reality or not but like Superman doesn't like the fact that Batman kills and a lot of comic book fans have a lot of you know they have issues with that and Batman doesn't like the fact that Superman has as much power man is still that can destroy the whole world and so those are both good reasons Clark stands for this hope right even though most of the people in this movie see him as the beginning of hope yet they still see him as this weird alien on their planet got all that stuff going on he let people die why not batman just killing people left and right both characters are a complete opposite from one another so see them fight against each other was gonna be pretty damn cool but what brings the movie down is just lex luther jesse eisenberg said again i always say this i don't know if it was his choice or snyder's choice but his interpretation and his mannerisms and his legs i don't like it might be the worst or if not the worst my least favorite because i don't know he seems giddy all the goddamn time he's like mm -hmm. like why he just this for some weird reason 
I just don't really like that. And then all the other characters brought the Cat Lord, they were just kind of there. Like, I don't feel anything for them whatsoever. They are just simply there to just aid Superman. And then this movie has the issue feeling rushed. Warner Brothers wanted to catch up to the MCU. They introduced Doomsday, Flash, Aquaman, Wonder Woman, all these characters. For what reason? To set up their own universe? Like, I get you want to set up your own universe, but like, you know, there's been a method that's worked before. You don't have to copy them, you know, beat by beat, but it's like, there's this formula over here, this outline. You just follow it, but they didn't want to. They want to do their own thing. It completely failed. So, it has that issue as well. I do like this movie up until Lex what the film was just off, but then when he revealed his fans, it was like, what? Why? All right. And it just kind of ruined it for me. So, that's why it's just okay to me. Number five will be... Superman 3, the MVP and the best part about this film is your boy God. With his cape flapping in the... He's like the best scene. He has the best art. He's just the man wanting a job, wanting to make some money. And then when he gets caught up, he gets involved with the wrong people. He has to pay his dues by, you know, meeting Superman. So he has the best art and the best character. Everything about him is fantastic. Everything else is just a slog. It is boring as fuck. Superman, while I like his split personality thing and having to face his inner self was cool. He was kind of all right. The villain, I forgot who the hell the villain was. Who is the villain? All I know for him is that he has a snow hill on the top of a roof. And that was cool. And like, that was the best scene of us talking about Superman. Superman, how he was flying and his cape was flapping, all that stuff. That was great. The plot there with his lady, with bad Superman, corrupted Superman, that was cool. A new kryptonite gets introduced, corrupted kryptonite to corrupt Superman. Again, I like it, but it's like meh. Like this whole movie is just meh. Like I don't really care for it aside from Gus. Because again, he's the best part, best art, best everything. And then he also moves on from Lois Lane previous movie. He's like raps her memory, right? So he moves on to Lana Lane, KA, Martha Kent on Smallville. One of those cases where they get previous active Superman projects and bring them back in the later project. She's like Lana Lang and it's the same thing again like it's boring like it's not her fault I just don't like this type of stuff so it's like okay redoing this she has like a son I think little brother saves him or whatnot I don't know the fight between corrupted Superman and Clark Kent that was cool I guess but again whatever when Gus finally gets grabbed by Superman they start flying him freaking out again I keep going back to Gus because he's like the best part but yeah that's all I gotta say about this film it's just you know all right with an amazing Gus performance number four will be the original Christopher Reeve Superman 1978. Now, I like this movie. This is a good movie, but it is kind of the typical Superman film. One thing I did not expect was the first chunk of this movie, like first 40, 50 minutes to be solely on young Clark Kent. I was like, oh, this is like, I thought it was gonna be like a small part, but no, it's actually like a big part. I was like, okay, this is cool. We meet Lana Lang, which will come back to Superman 3 previously, but like, this is just the typical good, safe Superman film. Like, I don't love it. It's just, you know, his alien ship crashing in his cornfield. Kent, they find him. He adopts him. He has issues in high school because he's a shy teen doesn't understand social you know things here and there we've all been through that it's awkward when you're in high school you hate it everybody hates it in high school there's that wonky ass running against the train thing that's a cool scene but it's definitely like man the wire work kind of crazy in this film he meets lois lane have a thing going on like it's just what you think of superman and know about superman and his you know origin story that's this movie now there's nothing wrong with that the issue is we've seen this multiple times so when i watch this movie nowadays it's like all right this is good but you know there are other films on this list are better and like doesn't even feel like lex like lex is probably like the smartest person ever maybe it's just because of john christ performance that i'm just like swayed easily and don't care about any other legs performance but one he has here which is weird he's bald by the end but then it's like he doesn't feel smart like he tricks superman with kryptonite but it doesn't i don't know it's just something not right it just feels like yeah i'm lex because he's lex like i don't know something was missing from this actor that's fine and then lex role i think sub is missing i think more of a villain is like menace or just i don't know something over the top kind of like john Cryer or something more serious like michael rosenbaum i would have take from this actor but again i don't know seven 80s stuff maybe the current back in the day was just be a villain for the sake of being a villain i wasn't alive back in the day so i really wouldn't know also the t from zod to come back in the sequel that's like a nice little like tie-in to the sequel they were planning to shoot this film in superman 2 back to back by donner himself so it makes sense that they tease zod and his group and the goonies in the very beginning and the phantom zone being stuck in the phantom zone and they come back later on and then the white suits on krypton cool but it's even like man this is it just kind of threw me off but it also looked cool at the same time and the theme i haven't even talked about the theme but the theme for the reeves film and returns all that stuff is iconic and fantastic i was still bop on my head nowadays just being like yeah this is a really good ass theme at least that's what i did when i watched this film but it's just a typical superman film number three will be <laughs> 
Superman Return. Now, I like Bernard Ralph as Superman, a special for Crisis Kingdom Come suit. Again, fantastic. So, when I was watching this film, I was kind of expecting a lot of things. And what I got was some of them where this is a, you know, a different story. This isn't the typical Superman story. And I like that. Having both Lois Lane and Clark Kent or Superman, as she knows them, kind of being apart and having to come back together. I like that. But I also don't care for that because, like, some relationship love stuff. Like, Lois Lane has moved on. That's interesting. She has a family now, has a husband, has a kid. But she doesn't seem to be happy or filled or satisfied with this family stuff because she misses Superman. She loved his brute, tall, you know, super heroic Superman stuff. And then the reason why he was gone is because he left to go to Krypto because it was fixed. Now, I don't know if I 100% believe that, to be quite honest. He left because of Krypton. I don't, I don't know about that one. But he left either way. It was to create this coming together again and trying to find each other again or whatnot. Even though Lois Lane can't really do that because she's stuck in this marriage. Kevin Spacey's Lex Luthor, he did it fine. Like, he felt like the one in the Reeves movies where, which, by the way, apparently this movie is a continuation of those movies, which I didn't know upon doing it years later on it. But, like, he just looking and then the only thing I liked about him was the fact that he would sacrifice his lady to die as a decoy and as a distraction for Superman so that he get kryptonite from the museum. Stuff like that. I wish the film would have done more of that because you don't get, like, that one scene and the rest of it is just looks and just being like, I'm Lex. You know, it's like, ah, alright. He did alright. The suit isn't the best, but I like it. I think the trunk part aren't my favorite. And then I do find that Brennan Rolf's Superman take, Clark Kent take, feels stiff. I don't know if he was just really nervous. The big role he is playing Superman, one of the most popular characters, comic book characters of all time. But he does feel stiff at times where I'm like, I think that was like a one take, you know? Maybe we should have redone a take. But I like him, so pretty much like him overall. And then having both him and Lex not each other until the very end, I like that. The confrontation and final fight, if you would say, is underwhelming. It's typical Lex Luthor has the upper hand, tap Superman. He wins technically, but then Lois and his husband save him. All that stuff kind of had a deflating and expected end for me, but overall, I think I like this film. Could have been better. It sucks that there was no sequel to this film. Number two will be News in Superman 2. Superman 2. Now, I'm gonna include both the theatrical and Donner Cut. I think both are good, but I do prefer the Donner Cut because of Lois Lane. I think the portrayal of Lois Lane in this film is the best because what she's willing to do to find out the identity of Superman is ridiculous, crazy, and awesome. Those glasses on Superman is like, hey, Clark Kent, you're Superman. Anyone can do this, like, you know, glasses on. That's still ridiculous. First thing she does, it jumps out like a goddamn window. Though, which I laughed at. I was like, God damn, this is so funny. She's like, she's willing to die for this. And then later on, she tests him, be like, Okay, I'm gonna shoot you, Kent. You better block this. She's like, It was blank, but then he doesn't tell her that. To her, be like, Yeah, I am Superman, tricking him. And that whole thing, again, crazy, hilarious, and kind of badass. You could also say that, you know, that's a bit overboard, but I kind of don't care because I kind of like that. She's great in this movie. God and his Goonies. Well, I don't think they were threatened. I never felt threatened by them. They were hilarious in this film. There's a bunch of like gun gags where they just, you know, twist it like toys. They're funny. They're not threatening at all, at least to me. Henchman kills like a snake and whatnot those are funny gag but they weren't threatening to me and then superman turning back time with the whole earth thing while that is ridiculous again this movie is ridiculous time to fix everything because he revealed to lois lane and all that stuff i could definitely see an argument be like well this movie is a waste of time but to me it's him not being selfish because he could have you know let things be but because he wants to keep things at the status quo in love with lois and knowing his identity he feels is a weakness and so because of that he turns back time at least that's how i would interpret it because he wants everything to go back to the status quo it would be a lot easier if she did not know and he could do things on his own he doesn't have to be like, hey, Lois, I'm gonna go. She's like, all right, bye, Clark. You know, like, it would be easier if he just did all of that. And he's sacrificing his love for Lois Lane. Not being selfish for it as well. So that's how I look at it. But I could definitely see the argument. This whole movie is a waste of time. And then number one should be no surprise, or maybe it is. It is Man of Steel. The more I think about this film, the more I like it. And then the more I like it, the more I just don't get the hate. I guess I do, but it's like, again, he's a very popular character, so every person has certain interpretation of him, or a certain way they want him. Kind of like Spider-Man or Batman. You know, they don't kill or whatnot. And so, again, Zack Snyder, I'm gonna use the word realistic. It's not realistic, but rooted in reality of like how people would actually react to an alien this powerful, like Superman. There are things like, hey, if they people know this, people are gonna come after you. People are gonna want you. The government is gonna want to use you as a, you know, weapon. I like that take. And the film is beautiful. It's one thing you can't fall aside for he has an amazing visionary directing movies look fan freaking tastic and the theme every time i hear it do i start liking it that flying scene when he flies for the first time get the suit starts flying the theme kicks in it's fantastic that theme where he kills zod which a lot of people had issues with was fantastic this somber sad theme and then him killing zod i think it was good because this isn't an experienced superman and i think people were expecting this experienced superman throughout his whole life he was sheltered by this father by the kents and so when he finally embraces you know who he is being superman but also trying to be this beacon of hope and not trying to i guess alienate 
himself to the world. He doesn't know how to think on his feet yet. He honestly, he could have flied up and not kill Zod, honestly. But like, he's fresh and new. He has to think impulsively. First thing that comes to mind, that pain his neck. At least that's how I rationalize it. That to me was a very powerful moment because he killed. Superman doesn't kill. So seeing him kill was a learning experience that he should never kill again because he's not an experienced Superman yet in this universe that Snyder set up. Lois saying she's fine. The Kens, they're fine. They're typical, you know, characters that are involved in Superman's life. They just need to be there. And then Zod, you get his motives. He's just a guy who wants to protect his planet, but then the people within his own planet, they want to destroy it because it's a dying planet. He just plans to use Earth as kind of a base for Krypton. This is an inner battle between him and Superman. Both of them destroy the city, which will go back to BVS and the hate for Batman as well. So, but in general, you understand why Zod is doing what he's doing. And it sucks that, well, at least at the time of recording this, there won't be another Henry Cavill Superman solo film no more. So, it sucks that he won't come back because I thought he was pretty good. There should have been a Man of Steel 2, not BVS or Justice League, but because again, Warner Brothers wanted to rush things. So, Man of Steel to me is the best Superman film. It's not great. The movie is just pretty good, but it is I mean, one of my favorite films of all time because it's just, it works, at least for me. But again, a lot of people have Superman as their favorite hero of all time. And, you know, I get it if you don't like this movie, but it's pretty damn good. So, those are my rankings for all eight current Superman films. It's probably going to be way different than yours and like kind of like relatively easy list because there's definitely like one bad, some okay, and then rest of are good. So, and there's only eight films. There isn't, you know, 20 or something like that. So, that's it for me. This has been The Road So Far, and thank you for watching. Thank you.